Good morning, students. The topic of our today's lecture is syntax, one of the branches of microlinguistics that focuses on phrases and sentences. Formally, syntax can be defined as the study of phrases and sentences in terms of their structure. So in syntax, we study the structure of phrases and sentences. Because our focus is on English, we study here is the structure of English phrases and sentences. In syntax, we explore the grammatical or which structure is grammatical, especially in terms of their rules. What is the function of the rules? These rules detail an underlying structure and a transformational process. So the question arises, what is the underlying structure and how is it different from a transformational process? The underlying structure is the basic structure. On the other hand, the transformational process is a process that permits us to do some kinds of alternation or some kinds of changes. Now, the, the underlying structure of English sentence, for example, is subject, verb, object, order. One of the examples is Mike wrote a novel last year. You can see that this sentence is composed of Mike as the subject, wrote as the verb, a novel as the object, and last year as the adverb of time. This is the underlying structure or the basic structure of any sentences in English. However, this sentence can be transformed, and this is what we call as a transformational process. So when this sentence is transformed, there are some possibilities. In other words, there are some possible results of transformation from the basic structure in the form of micro the novel last year. One of which is last year, Mike wrote a novel. You can see here that the edge of time last year is moved into the first position of the sentence. So the sentence is not written based on subject, verb, object, order but it has been transformed into adverb of time and then followed by subject. The other possibility is a novel was written by Mike last year. In this sentence, you can see that the object, a novel has been moved into the first position of the sentence. This is what we call as a transformational process. Syntax explores phrases and sentences. However, in this meeting, we only focus on a phrase. What is a phrase? We can simply say that a phrase is a constituent of a sentence. Why? Because a sentence is composed of phrases. A phrase is identified based on the presence of the core or the head. In other words, in every phrase, there must be a head. A phrase doesn't have a subject and a predicate or a subject and a verb or object order, but a phrase consists of a core. And a phrase itself can can consist of only a core. It means that a phrase can consist of only one word. So we can say that Mike, students, I as a phrase, even though they are words, but they are also called phrases. A phrase can be composed of a group of words. Let's say a novel, my book, a young man, a good student, and so on. 
This phrase is composed of several words. The other one, we also have to know that a phrase can be composed of a group of phrases. It means that in one phrase, we can find some other phrases. For example, the book on the table, go to the market, in the classroom. So let, uh, let's take the book on the table as the example. You can see here that the book is one phrase. On the table is the other phrase. The table is the other phrase. But these phrases constitute a single phrase. That's why I can say that a phrase can be composed of a group of phrases. Now, based on these examples, how do you define a phrase? Does a phrase have to be composed of several words? By looking at these examples, we can define that a phrase must not always be composed of several words. So a phrase can be defined as a word or a group of words or a group of phrases that have neither subject nor predicate. Okay, so we can define a, a phrase as a word or a group of words or a group of phrases with neither subject nor predicate. But remember that a phrase must have a core, okay? A phrase must have a core. And based on the constituents of the core or based on the words that serve as the core, phrases are divided into five types. The first one is noun phrase. Why is it called noun phrase? Because the core is a noun. Okay, the second one is verb phrase. The third one is adjective phrase. The fourth one is adverb phrase. And the last one is prepositional phrase. Once again, I tell you that the names of the phrases are derived from the word class of the core. Now, the question is, if in a phrase there must be a core, when the phrase is composed of more than one word, the other word is called? That is the question. So what is called for the other constituents of a phrase? They are called modifiers. So we can say that Modifiers are the words that accompany the head of the phrase. So when a phrase is composed of two words, one of which or one of them is the core and the other one is the modifier. When the phrase is composed of three words, one of them serves at the head and the other two words become the modifiers. Sometimes the modifiers can be placed before the head, and sometimes the modifiers can be placed after the word, after the core, sorry. When the modifiers are placed before the core or before the head, those modifiers are called pre-modifiers they are called pre-modifiers. When the modifiers are placed after the head, they are called post-modifiers. So we have two kinds of modifiers. The first one is pre-modifiers and the second one is post-modifiers. In the context of a phrase, a young man in a blue jacket, you can see here that the head is a man is a noun because the head is a noun this pray this phrase is called a noun phrase so you can see that 
a young is the free modifier and in a blue jacket is the post modifier in this phrase. Okay, so the phrase must have a core. Other words that do not belong to a core of a phrase belong to the modifiers, which can be either pre modifiers or post modifiers. Now, Let's see the structure of noun phrase. As I told you before, that noun phrase is a phrase whose core is a noun, whose head is a noun. So the main constituent of a noun phrase is a noun. So the first structure of a noun phrase is that noun phrase is composed of noun. Okay, so noun is the obligatory element, okay? The element that must be found in any noun phrase that is a noun. The other structure of noun phrase, noun phrase can be composed of determiner, adverb, adjective, noun, prepositional phrase, and complement phrase. And you can see here the plus symbol. What does it mean? The plus symbol here means that the adjective can be more than one adjective. So you may have one adjective, two adjectives, three adjectives or more. Okay, and I put them here within the parentheses this means that these elements are optional. These elements are not obligatory because the obligatory element of a noun phrase is only a noun. Determiner, adverbs, adjectives, prepositional phrase, and complement phrase are optional. They are not obligatory. Now, Let's see, what are determiners? Okay, determiners are words that usually accompany nouns, especially count nouns, because you know that count noun can stand alone in a sentence when it is singular. So determiner can be composed of article, you know, article in English. A, an, and the, or the, okay? These are articles. And then determiner can also be composed of demonstratives, such as this, that, these, and those. They are demonstratives. And then determiners, can also be composed of quantifiers. Quantifiers indicate quantity. For example, many, several, some, few, and so on. The other element of determiner is pro s. What is pro s? Pro s means possessive pronoun. Okay, possessive pronouns including my, your, our, their, his, her, and its. The next one is NP pose. Yeah, NP pause, sorry, NP pause. What is it? NP possessive, okay, NP possessive. What is the example? The example is, for example, Mike's book. So Mike's is, the noun phrase indicating possession. Mike apostrophe S, that is NP pos. Okay, so these are the elements of determiner. They can become the modifiers of a noun. The next one, the next structure of noun phrase is that noun phrase can compose of 
only personal pronoun or pro p personal pronoun so personal pronoun can replace all these elements so the np that is composed of determiner adverb adjective noun prepositional phrase and complement phrase can be replaced by a single personal pronoun so np the structure of np can only be composed of pro p or personal pronoun therefore we can conclude that not the structure of noun phrase can be either determiner adverb adjective noun pp and compi or pro p when you use personal pronoun okay the personal pronoun can be accompanied by any modifiers. So it becomes the core of the phrase and it becomes the only constituent of the noun phrase. Now, let's see the structure of a phrase. Because verb phrase has a core and the core must be derived from the name of the word class that becomes the head of the phrase. So VP or verb phrase, the structure of VP must be verb. This is the obligatory element of verb phrase. So verb phrase can be composed of only verb. And then, the other structure of VP can be verb plus NP. The next one, because you are also exposed to linking verbs, so verb phrase can also be composed of linking verbs plus noun phrase. Okay, the next structure is that verb phrase can be composed of verb plus prepositional phrase. And then verb phrase can be composed of linking verbs plus adjectives. Remember, verb actually is modified by adverb. When the verb can be modified by adjective, that verb belongs to a linking verb. Therefore, we can conclude that verb phrase, the structure of a verb phrase is verb plus noun phrase plus prepositional phrase, or the verb phrase can be composed of linking verbs plus noun phrase or adjective. This is the structure of a verb phrase. Now let's come to the structure of adjective phrase. The structure of adjective phrase, you know, the core of the adjective phrase is adjective. So the main structure of adjective phrase is adjective. Other elements are optional. What are they? For example, adjective here, can be preceded by adverb of degree. So when you use adverb of degree as the modifier, it becomes or it is placed before the adjective. Yeah, such as too young, very smart. Okay, so you can use adverb of degree as the pre-modifier of the adjective. And then, Adjective of degree can also come after the adjective. So the structure can be adjective plus degree, and then plus prepositional phrase, and then plus complement phrase. So this is the structure of adjective phrase. And you can see here that the main modifier of adjective phrase is adverb of degree. 
it can be placed either before the adjective or after the adjective. Okay, the example of adverb of degree that comes after adjective is long enough, for example, because enough is adverb of degree, long enough. Okay, and then uh, difficult enough and so on. Okay, so this is structure of adverb phrase. Next, adverb, uh, sorry, adjective phrase. Now let's see the structure of adverb phrase. The structure of adverb phrase is quite similar with the structure of adjective phrase because adverb can be accompanied by adverb of degree. Okay, for example, very quickly. So you can see that very here is the adverb of degree and quickly is adverb of manner. So the structure can be adverb of degree plus adverb. The other structure, adverb can also be followed by complement phrase. Now, the last structure of the type of phrase is the structure of a prepositional phrase. There's only one structure of a prepositional phrase. So when you analyze any prepositional phrase, that phrase must only be composed of preposition plus noun phrase, such as in the book, on the chair, on the table, from Jakarta, and so on. So, Prepositional phrase is composed of preposition plus noun phrase. I do believe that uh, you can understand the structure of a phrase, especially in English, because we focus on English syntax. The summary of our lesson today is syntax is the study of phrase and sentence structure. So when you want to arrange words into phrases and sentences, you must know syntax. Otherwise, you cannot arrange the sentences grammatically or you cannot arrange the words into a grammatically accepted phrase or a grammatically accepted sentence. That's all for today, students. And you can find more examples online or in the materials that have been given to you. And please watch this video one, not only once, but watch again, watch again until you understand, especially the concept of phrases in English.